hello beautiful people it's your girl for the choice and you're welcome to my channel how are you all doing i hope you all are doing well so guys in today's video we're going to be talking about this two white lady and the first one is coming out crying for help that she doesn't know how to raise a biracial kids like seriously before having a biracial kid you should have thought of it it's not gonna be easy you know you should have thought of it okay i'm gonna have it's not it's not about just having a biracial kid the pro the the most important thing is that you you know you have to be responsible for it you have to be you know like seriously before having that you have to thought of this how you how you're gonna be able to take care of them and the other lady she's saying that she have a biracial son and he grew up with white family and he learned racism by himself like seriously you have a biracial son and he grew up with white family or maybe your family and you you like you he doesn't know his father's culture or you don't train him with so many things or you don't taught him how to be you know like and then you come out to say yeah he learned racism by himself like seriously really <laughs> it's not about having biracial kids the most important thing you are able to take care of them you are able to talk them things they don't know so guys i came across this video and i decided to share with you guys so i won't review more details so i'm just gonna leave you guys to enjoy the show let me know what you think about this video by dropping down your comment below and don't forget to like share subscribe keep watching me keep supporting your girl with that for that review i will see you in my next one bye i don't even know how to start that my kids are half indian and today my three and a half year old broke my heart I'm nauseous. I'm sick to my stomach. I can't. I can't protect them. They're seeing so deeply rooted in our society that I can't protect him from. She legit just turned those stitches and duets off because she's probably getting red for fill. But let me just say, this seems like it's starting to become a trend because I've seen one too many videos like this where the moms are all the same color. But my question is, why are you coming and running to TikTok and asking how to raise your mixed child? Like. <clears throat> I have to remember to um censor myself because my account is on the verge of being banned so moreover you really should be mad at the people that look like you because they're the whole reason that your child is facing discrimination more moreover it's not on us to raise your child you made a mixed child you should have known that you were going to have to teach your child about something other than being white but see, y'all don't think about that when y'all out here fetishizing interracial relationships and mixed kids. And I'm in no way negating that her child might be facing discrimination or having an identity crisis. Not at all. But this is what happens when you try to raise them white. They get to question and features about themselves, colors about themselves that you cannot explain. And just to add insult to injury, y'all don't even believe black people when we say that racism is still alive and well in this country and it's being passed down from generation to generation like it's the family secret sweet potato pie recipe. And the comments on these types of videos are never helpful. It's always, well, let them watch these types of movies or let them listen to this type of music or do something of that nature. Y'all do understand that culture expands beyond videos and music, right? No, obviously not. I mean, it's really just mind blowing how dense they can be when it comes to situations like this. Like, be fucking for real. I don't even know how to start this. My kids are half Indian. Let's talk about children of interracial couples, especially ones where the main caregiver is white. Hi, my name's Hira. I'm a social worker and I'm in an interracial relationship. As the main caregiver, you have to understand that your child will have full access to your culture because of the amount of time you're going to be spending with them, but they will not by default have that same access to your partner's culture. So in order to serve your child's identity needs, you need to foster opportunities for your child to have access to your partner's culture. Otherwise, that's going to cause a lot of issues in the future. This is part of a conversation that my partner and I are already having about our future kids. Because I will be the main caregiver and I'm Pakistani, my children will have full access to language, culture, art, food, all of that stuff. But we're trying to find ways for them to have access to his culture, which is Eritrean. We've talked about the possibility of my mother-in-law living with us and helping me raise the kids so they can learn the language, eat the food, get that care. If that's not possible, I need to find other resources for my future children to be able to access their Eritrean culture. Culture is a huge part of identity, and if you're in an interracial relationship, you've got to be ready to step up to the plate. I don't even know how to start this. My kids are half Indian, and tonight my three white women stop 
the next time you feel inclined to come online and to talk about how difficult it is for you to raise your biracial or multicultural children, I want you to stop recording and instead go to Google and do the research and do the work. Now, I am not going to say every white woman who finds herself in this position was fetishizing a man of another culture, but it does happen. That being said, we can't always control being single mothers, but what we can do is make sure that our biracial and multicultural children have lives in which both of their ethnicities, both of their races, can exist cohesively so that they don't grow up to have identity crises or become raging racists because we didn't properly teach them about the other parts of themselves. It is absolutely ridiculous to me with the resources available why it is so difficult for white women who have biracial children to be able to raise them properly. I have five biracial children. Four of them are black and white. One is Hispanic. We talk about race. That whole I don't know response when your son asked, why were you different colors? That shows right there that you should have never been, in my opinion, in an interracial relationship because you are not comfortable having the necessary conversations you are going to have to have once biracial children are produced. Please stop having biracial and multicultural children. And then when they're old enough to say something like this, you can watch the woman's video or the other white woman who came online because her son who was black and white said he wanted to be white. And then asking black indigenous and other women of color for advice on what you should do. Do the work, do the research. There's a book that I have uh, reviewed that's Can I Touch Your Hair, that is about a black man and a white woman when they were younger, so a black boy and a white girl when they were younger in school and having race conversations. Now, just because your children or child may not be black or white, it still gives insight on how to have these conversations about different races and ethnicities. Stop having these children and expecting other people to do the work. People are tired of it. Do better. My son is biracial. He is black and white. So I love that you made this video because it so clearly acknowledges that there is a discrepancy in black versus white being raised in America. And I love that you reached out because you care. You want to learn. You want to do better for your baby, for your son. So I'm going to give you my advice. I am, I am a biracial woman who was raised by a white mother my dad is black and i'm very fair skinned if you can't tell I'm very light um when i was growing up my mom she was told constantly that she would never be able to raise me properly because she's a white woman and i'm biracial she could never raise a black woman how could she do that it would never work and my mom, she said, she kind of took it as a challenge. She said, you're right, I can't. But I will do the very best that I can to teach her what I can. And so that's what she did. And that's what I'm imploring you to do. Um, she took me to African American museums. She took me to the Underground Railroad. She took me to um, the August Wilson House, which is in Pittsburgh. He's this famous player, playwright. She took me to his plays. Every Black History Month, I had to sit down and watch Roots from beginning to end. And then uh, she also made me write a book report on somebody new that was an inventor or somebody who did something astounding in America that was black that they don't teach about in the school. Um, I had to present it to her. So that's something I teach you to do. Just teach him about his culture. There's, You're right. You can't teach him how to be black. You can't teach him about the things that he would face as being black. But you can let him know who he is. And then you can go the extra mile. And my mom used to take me to black women to get my hair done. And then she would take me to, um, you know, she didn't know how to do my hair, but she would, she took a class to learn. And then up until then, like I said, she took me to black women to do it and salons and black salons. And she would take me to black neighborhoods to, to get clothes and stuff like that so that I could dress the way I wanted to dress and I could explore everything that I wanted. And I didn't have to look like, you know, what she looked like. 
Um, and that's what I suggest that you do, you know, just, just that. Now, something else that my mom also did, she taught me about police brutality and she made me sit down and she made me watch the Rodney King. And she told me that because I'm so fair skinned and I'm so light that I'm going to have to be a voice and I'm going to have to be protective of those who are darker than me because they don't look at them the same way that they look at me. And that's something too. And now I'm a mom with two black sons and I teach them the same things that my mom taught me. My white mom taught me. So that's my advice for you, babe. Just teach them. Teach him. You can do it. And then bring him around people that look like him. Real people that look like him. Black and white. And he lives in a house full of white people. I'm going to say this as tender as I can. Um, white women, you cannot ignore or erase the black side of your biracial children because they are going to grow up and still have questions about the other side that quite frankly as you can see in this video you are not equipped to answer or handle in all honesty what did you think was going to happen when you placed a mixed child in an all-white environment all-white parents all-white family all-white household all-white friends possibly a majority white school and ignore that they are still half black and society notices that kids adults people around you notice that even though you have someone tried to ignore it because that's your son and you feel like it's not such a big deal or it's not something that needs to be brought up or talked about if as a white mother you are not equipped or going to be ready to deal with the black side of your child do not have biracial children Date a black man, love a black man, that's your business, but do not have children with that man because you're going to mess those kids up completely. Now, the little boy in this scenario wants to be white with straight hair because that's all he sees. He is the eyeball out. He realizes that he's the eyeball out, so now he's trying to assimilate into what he sees around him. And as a mother, you did that. You created that space. And there's no hate in that statement that's just the honest truth this is why so many mixed race children have so many identity issues now as adults you can see it all through tiktok just scroll and look but i wish you light love and healing on your journey with your son he learned racism on his own he sure did a fact that shouldn't surprise you, but nevertheless, it does. Racism is evident, especially in the South. You ignoring that is part of the problem, and until you address the fact that you did in fact ignore that for these six years, you're not going to get anywhere. He needs to be around people who look like him multiple times a week, if not every day. Because the racism that you didn't see or think that it was relevant enough to bring up and tell him and warn him about uh, is going to be around. And he's going to need tools that will help him deal with that. He's going to need tools that will help him overcome the oppression that is a reality for him. Things that you won't see, you're not uh, able to think about uh, dealing with because all of the solutions that you would have are coming from a white person who uh, 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 the response to your solution will be totally different when coming from your black son. He'll need to learn things from other people who have their shit together, adults who know how to deal with this shit. And the fact that it's this late in the game and you're getting to this is super disappointing. But you're here now, so let's go. It's not enough to not be racist. You have to be anti-racist. You have to be there to tell him that whatever's going on, it's not his fault. And it's unfair. And you understand that. Like, not excuse it. But tell him, make sure that he knows that this society is against him.
And that's hard to freaking do with your kid, right? You want to tell them that you're going to be there to protect them, but the reality is you're not. You're just not. You can't. You owe it to your son to start educating yourself about history so you can be there as much as you can for him and find him community. Like, both things are important. You need to stand up for him when you see shit happening. Like, for real. Or if he tells you about something, you need to be there to do as much as you can to use your white privilege for your son. You need to not be defensive. To be open and to just accept things because you don't have time for defensiveness. You just don't. You're already in it. Um, so as one of those mixed people with white moms, um, and I'm a black woman, very often. I'm going to chime in, but I don't have a white mom. But as a mixed child growing up with a black mom and a white dad, I mean, it's just as hard. You grow up in a neighborhood and society where you are the palest, reddest thing they have ever saw. And so, I mean, having a black mom doesn't make it any better sometimes because you don't get to learn about what your white history is. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know about it, even though it's not good. I still want to know why people don't like this color skin. You know, and when you look and it's confusing because you have siblings and family members who are black, dark. And then here you are trying to figure out why your skin is so pale or why people hate you because of the color of your skin. Like, what did I do because I'm so light skinned? Like, or because who my parents are. So at the end of the day, it's, 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 I'm not saying it's no better for the the kids with a white mom but imagine the kids with a black mom living in a black neighborhood with all black people you ever thought that that affects a person and just so you know sorry but I don't identify with black oh and let's not mention you know, the fact that, you know, as a society, black people are just, they're raised to hate white. Just how white is raised to hate black. Because as a kid, I remember I had, I had to learn how to fight. Because black girls hated that I had long hair. Or my hair was so, my hair was so pretty when I got it braided. And it was like, I literally had to learn how to defend myself from black people. Because they didn't like how light-skinned I was. I went to school and I was an outcast in my neighborhood. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I think biracial kids, whether you have white moms or black mom, I think we have it hard all the way around because we in the middle. We don't even have a side. We just in the middle. Okay, so I'm just using this comment as just, like, a placeholder because, like, fuck, that sucks, and also... I am so tired of this claim at this point. Because everyone tries to make it. All the time. Uh, anytime a mixed person does anything weird or fucked up. But the issue isn't white mothers. Let's be honest. The issue is having a racist white parent. Like, regardless of if it's your mom or your dad... If they're white and racist, you're going to be fucked up and do fucked up shit. If you want to make the case against people with white moms, maybe it's a numbers thing. Yes, everyone should speak on their privilege, of course. But I swear to God, the issue isn't white moms. I promise you, it's having a racist white parent ingraining white supremacy in their brown children. Sounds like one, some people need to educate themselves more before they comment. Two, the education comes from externally looking at resources as well as internally trying to have some introspection, like think about your thinking process and where that comes from. And three, some of y'all just have to be more specific with your racism. 
Some of you just has to be more specific with your racism. Because some aspect of it isn't even the Kardashian thing. Some people commented that M is not black enough for them. Oh, so you just, some of you just take the steps. Because some of you just need to be more specific with your racism. And that's the issue. It's so funny that you say this because the amount of people who've been like, why are you always like trying to hide your white side or alienating? I don't know if that's the right word. Or like pushing away from being white. I'm like, I'm not. First of all, I've just never had to defend the Caucasian. People don't treat me poorly, really, because of my light skin. They pick on my nose, my fucking lips, my hair texture, whatever else that makes me look more black. So shut up. Not you, but the people. And I do identify as black or biracial black, but mostly just black because I'm like, you can tell that I'm biracial, I think. <laughs> so I don't have to really speak on it. <laughs> but also the white people, my white family have been pretty awful, except maybe my one aunt, but she's still not perfect. She's a little aunt. But the white path disowned my mother for even marrying a black man in the first place. And she ended up being just as racist as them anyway, so. Now listen, I said I won't go make no video, but then I seen this comment. Let me tell you something. One thing for sure and two things for sure. I'm played by my motherfucking mama. I don't give a fuck what color she is. Now listen to listen, Biracial girls, stop this shit. I mean, if you went through heartache, you went through pain, you went through racing with your mama, with your white mama, all right, I feel bad for you. You should never gone through that. But y'all know y'all need to speak the fuck up about the ones that got black mamas too. It wasn't all peaches and motherfucking cream either. Like, I'm just saying. And then y'all got this trend going around telling some, oh, if you had a black mama and you're biracial, you're superior against the rest. What the, are you fucking stupid? There is, we already get dragged through the motherfucking mud on the internet enough because we light skinned. We already get hated and bashed. So you need to tell us our own light skinned motherfucking race. It's now on here with the stupid shit. Thousand. If you had a black mama, you're superior than the other ones. Like, what the? Do y'all hear yourself? Like, stop it. Not, oh, let me see. my mama had us at 14. Had three motherfucking biracial babies at 21. Got disowned by her own motherfucking family. My mama is from H Town, baby. We grew up in Fifth Ward. With nothing but blacks and browns all around us. My mama didn't know how to do my hair, but she learned how to do my hair. There's plenty of white mamas on here that got biracial kids or adopted black kids. They learn how to do their hair. They learn their culture. My mama have never kept me away from my black side. That's all I've been motherfucking around my whole goddamn life. That's all I know. That's all I've been a motherfucking around. Like y'all gotta y'all gotta stop. There's a lot of white women. You not know my mama got disowned by her family. My mama got left out on the streets at 14 with because she fell in love with a black man. Y'all think it's easy for these for these white mamas when they decide to step out their own motherfucking race and have black kids? Y'all think that shit's easy? No, it's it's fucking not. My mama had to fight my black side of the family. Because she was a white girl. And how can you bring this cracker ass girl in my family? How can you tarnish our black family with their white blood? And da 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 Y'all think y'all the only motherfuckers that go through the shit? No, everybody go through the shit. If you, it, it doesn't matter. You love somebody out your motherfucking race. You love somebody your culture. Bitch, you going through shit. Everybody. It doesn't matter who what the fucking race you are. Light skinned girls, can we stop this shit? Can we stop? Because you, now you got... Other girls having to deal with this shit. My mama never been racist. My mama never experienced racism with my mama. Never. Nothing. We've always been part of the black community, black culture and all that. You see her ratchet ass got a motherfucker bonded on. Yeah. Comments were left exclusively by black people, mostly black women. And. Okay. I'm about to actually wake this up for um you, Mr. Matt Joe. The fact that that comment by that black woman, I think it was a black woman, I'm assuming it's a black woman, maybe it was a black man, I don't know, who made the comment, oh, his mom is definitely white. The reason why they made this comment is because it's actually a common phrase amongst black people to say this because we can instantly clock, and not just black people, but biracial people with a black parent um, and a non-black parent, 
in this specific context, a white parent being the non-black parent, we instantly can clock when a biracial person has a white parent. And here's why. And here's why it went over your head. They were pointing in the obvious out that you, yes, you are biracial, but your experience is completely different from other biracial men who have a black parent and a, uh, a white parent as well. And the difference is, is that at least to me, clearly, it seems like uh, you were raised white. You were raised cultureless, like very obviously. Like, I didn't have to go to your Instagram page to even have common sense to grasp this. Other Black people instantly clock this in your comments. But I, I said, let me be fair. Let me not say anything in a video that I could be wrong about. But I went to your Instagram page, and I was correct. Like, you are not in any proximity with Black people at all. Like, at all on your page. Which is so fascinating to me because you keep coming at Black women. You keep responding to Black women nonstop. Which, there's nothing on your page at all of you being proximity of Black men. Like, at all. Maybe it's like within the gym or something, but on your Instagram page, it's like nowhere. I mean, I see you holding an American flag. Like, are you serious? Like an American flag, an American flag shirt. It's very much giving you were raised cultureless, not in the proximity of black people, not in the proximity of being connected to your black American cultures, nothing. So why are you surprised? Is my question. Why are you surprised at this reaction to you? It's because you sound very much anti-black. You sound colorist. You sound like a foot soldier for massage noir. And this game you kind of play where you're like, oh no, I don't want to offend black women. You clearly have a deep hatred for black women. And I would recommend going to a black therapist to try to unpack and unlearn that. You clearly have the resources and wealth to do it. You should try it. You should challenge your I think the funniest part about this whole comment is the fact that you're telling me what I said was wrong, but I am a black biracial person with a white mom, so wouldn't I be allowed to say it? <laughs> Not too long ago, I think about a year ago, there was a wave of black biracials talking about their experiences of having a white mom versus those ha who had a black mom growing up. And all the biracials with white moms had similar experiences, if not the same, with ignorance and sometimes even racism. You are absolutely right that the black parent needs to always educate their child on their roots. However, if you are going to be a parent of a child and you are in an interracial relationship, you should always be educated on that person's culture that you are having a child with and be ready to educate your child as well and understand that you cannot overstep certain boundaries. Because at the end of the day, my mom was white, not black. So there's certain topics even today that I tell her, well, I don't want to hear your opinion on because she's not black. There are a lot of disadvantages when you do have a white mom and you are a black biracial woman. And I can't necessarily blame the other commenter for being as ignorant as she was because you really don't understand a lot of the struggles that you've gone through and fully understand your place until you live life on your own and go through those things and start realizing, damn, they're treating me like this because I am black. And in my experiences, when it comes to that stuff, sometimes I do feel invalidated or I did feel invalidated by my mom, especially when it came to talking about dating. But I won't go into more of my experiences unless y'all want me to. This comment makes me sad because it is so far away from my intentions and is not at all who I am. But I do understand why this comment was made and I understand how people could view someone like me and even the video I posted that way. Having a black dad is not my whole personality, um, but it is something that has hugely impacted my life experience, really affected the way that I grew up and gave me a very unique perspective on the world and I'm very grateful for it. But it also has brought along a lot of challenges for me in my sense of identity and trying to figure out where I belong in the world and what group I belong in. Obviously there's a huge sense of black pride in the world and I understand why. The black culture is something that has vastly influenced and impacted every part of society in America especially and has influenced a lot of trends and 
sayings and people misuse those sayings and people take advantage of black people and their personalities and their their trendy statements and dances and use those things um for their own virility viral viralness and i get the frustration from black people when this happens white people using their sounds and their dances or using their race to benefit themselves. That's not my intention. Um, for me, I'm very proud of where I come from. I'm very proud to have been raised for 10 years by my black grandmother, um, to have a black dad, to have a fully black sister, to have been forced to step out of ignorance and see the world for what it is and the issues that my black community faces. I'm proud to come from a black family and that shouldn't be something that is taken offensively or a bad thing. Um, and I I do see a lot of people get offended by that. I'm thankful for being biracial in general. Um, and I know that I look completely white. I have little to no black features. Um, and I am seen as a white woman by the world, by society. I benefit from that. And I know that that is something that really in some people's eyes disqualifies me from being black but being biracial for me being raised by white people and black people has really given me a lens to see the world from so many different angles and has allowed me to have a oh, full picture of a lot of different issues that people struggle to understand on both sides but it has been hard in the sense that i sometimes do feel rejected by the black community at least on tiktok I'm not trying to whine because a lot of people have way bigger issues to deal with, but identity crisis is something a lot of biracial kids deal with, I think, because of this response. Um, I'm definitely the, obviously, the white looking one uh, in my marriage. Um, I'm biracial, so Mexican and Irish, and my wife is Spanish and Mexican, so my daughter is predominantly Mexican, and she certainly presents as very uh, melanated, I'll say. And while I love that about her, and I think she's easily one of the most beautiful little girls I've ever seen, today was just a horrible day because I, I just feel powerless to protect her from anything, you know? Like, I don't feel like I can protect her. Uh, from gun violence, I don't feel like I can protect her, her, her body, the rights of her body. And I'm just feeling very hopeless and terrified for her future. I completely agree. I, I don't, don't know how my little boy, who's currently gestating in my wife, um, he technically has more rights than my three-year-old daughter. How is this a world where the little boy that's not even born yet, he's, he's, she's about to be 20 weeks, he's not even halfway to the finish line, and he already has more rights than the little girl I just took to Chuck E. Cheese on a really bad day because I was just trying to do something. She doesn't understand what she's lost today, but I do. So I just wanted to take her somewhere. I've never taken her there before. And I just wanted to cheer her up and maybe sort of cheer myself up a little bit. And it did work for a little bit, but um, when I put her down today to go to sleep, I just uh, just wanted to cry, and and I just don't, you know, I just don't have a lot of optimism that the world she stands to inherit and the world that my little boy is going to grow up in is a world worth growing up in, and that's a really sad notion. I don't think I can protect her from racism either. I know I can't. Um, you know, I can just try and keep racists away from her. But I live in Texas, so good luck. We still have sundown towns in this state. You know, racism is alive and well in the great state of Texas. And people like John Corrin and Greg Abbott and Ted Cruz and your normal clown car of idiots have no problem with it. They endorse racism, homophobia, all of it. And if it were up to me, I would literally try and get the fuck out of this country. But 
I'm a teacher. I don't make enough money to do that. What an awful day. So I made a video response to this and I cursed at you. Then I took a look at your profile and from what I understand, you're 16 years old. So what I want to say, I can't say to you, but I'd like you to go get your mama.